Hi guys, it's Mark Zikri, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zikri of Space Command, and I'm in here, here in Cannes, France. MIP commented yesterday, and I'm flying out tomorrow, so I've got my details, I think, clear. We'll find out uh, if, I, if I actually get on the airplane and get home, and, you know, uh, the, we'll see how the connecting bus works. I, so far, so good. Um, I wanted to um, follow up and, and address some concerns and some questions. Uh, as you know, there's 3,000 Space Command backers from our Kickstarter campaign, 3,000 around the world, and of those 3,000, three had some concerns and some complaints and some worries about Space Command. So, so three three people out of 3,000 is 0.1 percent. So I don't think that's a bad um, uh, uh, percentage. But I wanted to address these things even so because I know that probably many people have have some questions, and I wanted to address them and uh, and get just get clarity around this. I've said a lot of this stuff before, and so some of it may be familiar, but some of it is new, and some of it's very exciting, so I'll tell you all about it. Um, so, so, so first of all, people are saying, when is, why don't you just finish it? Why don't you just finish Space Command? Well, I'd love to. If it were soup, I would. Uh, you know, I'd just put in water in the soup and heat it and, you know, and serve it. But unfortunately, Space Command is a little more complicated than that. Uh, essentially, here's what's going on. It's, it's, it's super, super clear. Um, you know, we raised, we raised $221,000 on our Kickstarter campaign. All of that money, all of it, went to make the Space Command film, the first film, the two-hour film, the one that we're in post on. All of it was used to transform the, the, the warehouse into a studio, build the sets, get the equipment, hire the cast and crew, and shoot it. Um, I did not take, well, I took a salary to the degree that legally Elaine and I had to pay, be paid one dollar each to write and direct and produce Space Command, so a big, a big dollar. <laughs> and so, and I put that back into Space Command, interestingly enough, but legally we had to pay, be paid a dollar. I have not, I have not taken a salary on Space Command. Um, in fact, I've, I've, I've put over $50,000 of my own money into Space Command, mine and Elaine's, and, um, and I'm not rich, believe me, if you saw my car you would absolutely know that fact. <laughs> but, um, but, but, but in terms of when it's going to be done, the thing that's holding us up, the only thing that's really stopping us is the cost of visual effects. Now, when I, was, uh, when I did World Enough in Time with George Takei, the Star Trek episode that got nominated for the Hugo, um, you know, we got all of our visual effects free from uh, the Dave School. Uh, Ron Thornton and Lee Stringer, who are Emmy winners from Star Trek, and I'd worked with both of them before, and I'd worked extensively with Ron on such things as Captain Power and Babylon 5 and, and again, Star Trek, all sorts of stuff. Um, a genius, and he's been working on Space Command now. Uh, he was heading up the, the Dave School of Visual Effects in Orlando, and they provided over 700 visual effects shots for World Enough in Time, a staggering amount of, of you know, Emmy quality, and uh, Oscar quality VFX. And Doug Drexler, the genius of working on Babel, on Battlestar Galactic at the time, plugged the holes and filled in the, the, the missing places. And so together we were able to get all of that done for free. Uh, but when I finished that, uh, Ron Thorne said to me, you know, you just got one and a half million dollars of visual effects for free. And I said, yes, I know that. Unfortunately, with Space Command, we have not been able to do that. I've, ta I've, I've, I've been talking to visual effects schools for years, actually. They have not come, come up to the bar. Their work is not of sufficient quality. They, can't, they just are not delivering. And so I had to go to people I could hire. And they're not charging me where they charge a studio, but they're charging me a fair amount. The visual effects are very expensive. And we have 1,900 of them to complete in the first two-hour Space Command film. So that's a, a, a ton. So it's mainly about raising the money now to finish with the quality that we all require, we all need. So, um, <clears throat> so that's, that there's only three places that money can come from. It can come from crowdfunding, it can come from investment capital. Uh, so if you want to buy Space Command shares, 7,500 bucks a share, you'll, you'll, you'll get profits from my profits as a producer and, uh, and uh, it'll get done, it'll all be put into finishing the first two hours. So, you know, it's, it's not a bad deal all around. So it's either crowdfunding, investment capital, or I sell the show. And some people are saying, well, you said you weren't, you know, they, they don't understand, the networks and studios don't understand, and why are you selling it? Let me, let me be clear. <laughs> and again, you know, I've, I've said this before, but, but many of you, I'm sure, don't watch every video I post, every, every missive I send. My God, it would be tedious to do, so I assume. Um, what, basically, it isn't that I'm averse to the networks and studios. I've done hundreds of hours of network TV, many, many pieces of work I'm proud of and that you guys love. But I didn't want them to dictate from the get-go who I could cast, what I could write, what I would need to put into it. I would never have been able to cast Mira Furlan, Bob Picardo, Bill Mummy, Doug Jones, Mike Harney. I would never have been able to have, have the cast we all love and want with any network. They would have insisted on someone who was on, some, someone who couldn't act, someone who was in the light, latest hit from some goofy network, someone, you know, when they're paying the bills you have to say yes or fight it and lose and then you're fired. So 
I didn't want to fight those battles. I wanted to fight the battle for you guys, which was to make Space Command and make it wonderful. So that's, that, that was the choice I, I, I embarked upon. But it was never with the idea that we wouldn't ultimately have a network or a studio. It was, or particularly a network, let's say. I, I want a broadcaster, because they can put the money in to promote it. They can let everyone around the world know, know it exists. They can distribute it. There are many things that they can spend millions of dollars doing where we can't raise that much money, and they will get it out into the world. But beyond that, all, you know, all the shows and movies that we love have been made by studios and networks for the most part. So Blade Runner, Battlestar Galactica, the Ron Moore one, Star Trek. You know, every now and then the dice roll correctly and you get a great show. But I didn't want to roll those dice. I didn't want to take those chance, be, chances because I knew that if I controlled it, it would be what we all wanted it to be. So that was the choice I made. But now, now I'm here at MIP. And oh, oh, here's the other part. Here's the other question that someone asked, which is, why are you spending all this money going to Europe and France and where you Kickstarter money and what are you doing? You know, I'm probably they don't talk like that they probably you know by, I'm probably insulting them not a penny of the Kickstarter money has been used to travel to France to travel to England and the only reason I'm, I'm traveling to these places is because this is where the buyers are I'll, and I'll give you a great example of that um, but, but let me explain where the money has been coming from um, uh, some of it I've paid for out of my own pocket um, when you see me in a suit, it's a suit I bought, <laughs> you know, when I'm all dressed to the nines, you know, all of that. A lot of people have been very kind to me. One of our investors has a guest house in London. He's let me stay there on the two trips, m me and Elaine. And when Elaine came with me that first time, he paid for her airfare out of his own pocket, out of the goodness of his heart. So that wasn't coming out of Kickstarter money, not a penny of it. Um, and, and the same with France. And, and when, I, when, I, when, I, when I go to England, when I go to France, and these are all for meetings to meet with the networks, meeting to meet with the buyers. And it's, uh, and because again, they're, they're make, doing great work, you know, Dr. Hugh, Human, Dr. Who, Humans, all of these great shows, Man in the High Castle, SSGB, which is coming down the pike, it's another alternate his, history uh, thing the BBC is doing. You know, they're doing great work and I want to meet with those executives. So when I come, I buy the cheapest airline, airfare ticket I can buy. Um, I often take a bus to the airport, for God's sake, not even a taxi. And, um, and I, I, for instance, I, I rented an apartment via Airbnb here in France, it's a hundred a night. So it's coming out of my pocket and, and what the investors, you know, you know, pay, but I'm being very, um, very frugal, and it's toward the purpose of selling the show, toward the purpose of paying back my investors. So it seems like a business expense that's justified. And again, compared with what Space Command is costing to make, it's a, it's a pittance, relatively. It's, it's very, very little. So, um, but. So let's see, what, what other things did people, were people asking me? Um, uh, name dropping, name dropping. Why are you name dropping? You're always name dropping. I'm not, I'm not, honest to God, I'm not trying to name drop. Well, all I'm trying to do is let every, let all of you know, let you know that major people running the top shows, Damon Lindelof, Frank Spotnitz, you know, J.J. Abrams, all of these people, Guillermo del Toro, they're very much behind what we're doing. Rock Neil Bannon, who created Farscape, um, you know, uh, uh, Bill Nolan, who co-wrote Logan's Run, they love Space Command. Neil Gaiman, when I sent him the opening five minutes of, of, of the of the two-hour pilot, he emailed me back, glorious. You know, these people love it. They're behind us. They're, they want us to succeed. It helps enormously. Um, I want you to know we are going to finish this. It will be wonderful. And so, so I knew it would take a long time. I didn't know it would take this long, but, you know, I push a rock up the mountain. And if you don't get to the top of the mountain quickly, you just keep pushing the rock and you get to the top of the mountain. The Twilight Zone companion took me five years to write. I was writing other shows at the time, you know, other projects, but that was my main project. Uh, the book with Guillermo del Toro took four years. You know, quality work takes time unless you have a big paycheck, you know, that a studio or a network are providing. And that's not what we have at this moment, but it's what we hope to have. And so, um, but in terms of the name dropping or saying I'm meeting with this executive or that executive from this network or that network, again, it's just to let you guys know what I'm doing, keeping you in the loop. It's not to brag, believe me, it's not to brag. It's, uh, you know, but, but, it, but it also heartens me enormously when any of you send me encouragement, when any of my friends, any of these people send me encouragement, because I've seen how hard they work and I know that they're trying to create wonderful work and they're, you know, Frank Spotnitz, who ran Man in the High Castle, created that show, said, you know, I always aim for the fences because at least then you might get a single. And if you don't aim for the fences, you won't even get that. So I, I enormously agree with that. I enormously agree with that. And um, so, so, and then, and then, uh, and then, oh, and also in terms of the money I'm spending. So, so, you know, and if I have an expenditure that's not a Space Command expenditure, I don't even spend out of the, the Space Command coffers at all. I mean, the Kickstarter money is all gone. That was all used for, for the, the shoot. Now, we are, we do have this, a, a bit of money aside. We are going to be sending you t-shirts, patches, posters, all that 
stuff. So that is coming, and we've been pricing it out. We, again, we want it to be as much as we can send to you guys as soon as possible. So that is in the mix, just to let you know. Um, but but like when I buy something like, for instance, um, a, a visual aid, when I buy, for instance, a plush toy for Elaine, you know, to bring back home, and don't tell Elaine, don't tell Elaine, um, you know, that comes out of my pocket. I, I, I use my my personal Bank of America, you know, debit card. So, um, and then, by the way, if you want to see the plush toy again, it's very cute. Look at this thing. And it says, it says, look at this. I'll show you guys. This is very cute. I'm in France. So the little card says, Adoptez-moi. Look at that, Adoptez-moi. Isn't that, you know, she'll love it. She'll love it. So, <laughs> but, um, but, it, but, you know, so, but, 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 to, but here's why I'm here. We are, tr we are trying to do something no one has ever done, which is to create a big franchise science fiction space going show that the fans initially funded and a network then picked up. No one has ever done that. And so as a result, we're at the cutting edge. We're, we're blazing a trail. And, um, and that takes time and it takes effort and it takes convincing people of what you're doing. It takes, it takes, it takes educating them, the, the executives, the studios, the networks, etc. So. So the reason I'm here is because, you know, my whole plan was shoot it, make it wonderful, get a major agency to rep me, and then sell it as a show. So we're, we're financing the first two hours via crowdfunding, being investment capital, but the plan is then to have the series, the, first, the five seasons, financed by, by, the, by the networks if we can, because that costs millions and millions and millions of dollars. I mean, literally, that's, we're talking for five seasons over $100 million. And so... Um, so that's 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 the reason. That's that's what it's all about. So, and I have another plan down the road, another project. I'll tell you about one Space Command is is, is safe, safe and sound. Uh, that's even even more grandiose and crazy and bigger than this. That, that you're gonna absolutely love. It's an amazing big project. I've started talking to some of my friends about it, and um, I can't wait to to tell you about that one. But that's not. I'm not doing it now. I'm not doing it until Space Command is is where we need it to be. So, um, but here's here's the whole thing. The way it works in this business. You need to get on their radar and you need to go where they go. And often when you go to conferences, when you go to trade shows, they're all there. You run into them. You get meetings. You catch the people on the fly. And I'll give you a great example. And it's, this is very, very difficult. These people, you know, are very, very busy. They're very, um, I was going to say arrogant. That's not true. But they certainly believe that they are the kings of the universe in many cases. So, so for me with my little, my little postcard with Space Command, you know, going, hey, look, Space Command, you know, you have to get their attention. So certainly having CAA repping me now doesn't hurt at all. But I have to come here. I have to do the footwork. I have to be the one, you know, with, with shoe leather and, uh, you know, out there on a wing and a prayer. A shoe shine, what is it? A, a, a shoe shine and a smile, whatever this, the line from, uh, from De Death of a Salesman is. But, um, but I'll give you an example of why this is vital and why this is so important. So I come here, I have many meetings, uh, um, uh, you know, BBC, Sky, ITV, uh, Sony, uh, AMC, on and on. It was great, wonderful people, wonderful executives, and very open to what I'm doing and very encouraging. But here's the cool part. So there was a... Um, there was an invitation-only event at a hotel just open to um, online content providers, the big guys, Amazon, Netflix, those guys. And, um, and it was invitation-only. I tried for weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks to get an invitation through all the, all the channels I could, and nothing was working. And finally, while I was here, I ran into someone from MIPCOM, and they were able to get me an invitation. So I go there that morning and the head of an extremely big studio is speaking. I promise you that there are many movies and TV shows you've loved that this company made, and I don't want to say the name because, again, this is in, the, in motion now. So, um, so I, I position myself at the front of the audience, and he finishes speaking on the stage. He's being interviewed, and he comes down, and he mentions, he mentions while being interviewed that they are about to start a network for science fiction content, nerd content. Again, I'm not going to get more specific than that, but it's basically the perfect venue for what we're doing. Now, again, there are other perfect venues. I love Netflix, I love Amazon, sci-fi, you know, we, we, we know they're hits and misses, but possible, very possible. So, but this, so I, so I immediately, as he comes down off the stage, I, I walk right up to him, I'm the first person to talk to him, I've got my Space Command postcard in my hand, and I, I say, I'm Mark Zikri, this is what I'm doing, this is, and here it is, and he looks at it and he says, this is, abs this is absolutely what we're looking for, this is perfect for what we're looking for, and I'm gonna pass it on to my team, okay? Short and sweet. So then I have to run to another meeting with, uh, with Damien Keogh of Lookout Point, a, a British company that does a lot of great TV. And this is my third meeting with him, and a very great meeting. 
And, uh, but that night, 10 at night, I'm walking uh, on what's called the Croissette, and it's, um, it's by the ocean. The hotels are on the other side. This is Cannes, right, where the Cannes Film Festival has been held for, uh, since 1949. So you've seen that red carpet. You've seen all of those wonderful things with the stars. And I'm walking 10 at night, and I'm walking back from one of the hotels, and there on, the, on that block, there are only two people walking toward each other. It's me and the president of that, of that company, the president of that studio. And he says, I talk to my people, and, and they really like your project. They like your cast. It's a sticky cast. And what that means, that's a showbiz term, it means that's a cast that has a fan following that, that, an, that you can promote and an audience will watch the show because of those actors. Doug Jones, Mira Furlan, Bob Picardo, etc. And it took a sci-fi guy, it took his team who are sci-fi nerds to know that's a sticky cast because most network executives would not know that. So he says, um, so what would it take to, he said, he said, would you be open if we aired this as a movie and then saw the audience response, which I know would be great, and then greenlit the show? And I said, yeah, that would, I said, would that work for you? And I said, yes, that would work for me. And he said, well, well, what if it, what if, and I said, but you know, but you know, we've, we've shot the first two hours. And he said, oh, he also said, well, what would it be per, per episode? What would the budget be? And because I've been talking to all my friends who run network shows, I said, well, he said, just, just a ballpark, just a range. I said, well, well, uh, this, this much per hour on the high side, this much per hour on the low side. He didn't bat an eye. He loved it. He thought it was perfect. And then he said, well, and I said, but you know, we, we shot the first two hours. And, he's, and it's in rough cut, and we just need to finish, we need the money to, to do VFX in post. And he said, well, well, what if, what if we gave you the money to finish it? Would that, would that work for you? Would that work? And then we'd air it and see if it got a response, and, uh, you know, and, and then go from there. And I said, yes, that would work for me. So he said, well, well you know, uh, uh, get in touch, let's, let's ha you know, get in touch with my team. So I get back to my apartment, it's 11.30 at night, and I get, and the, the phone rings. The phone rings at 11.30 at night, it's the head of his network calling from Los Angeles. And he's a huge, he's a fan of my work, he knows my credits, and we talk, uh, we have a good long talk, and I tell him about Space Command, I, he's looked over, you know, he looked over the postcard, so then I send him all the material, I send him the, the first script, I send him the, um, the um, you know, the trailer, the, 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 the Comic-Con panel, all this stuff. And so we're going to talk further. Now, this is not a bird in the hand. It's a very hopeful conversation. It's a very good conversation. Of course, I, I emailed my agent. It, nothing may come of it, but it's a very hopeful sign. So first of all, if any of you have been thinking of investing in Space Command, $7,500 a share, uh, and you would get a return on those two episodes, the profits that I get, that's part of the pie, and the profits that, and part of that pie would go to my investors. So they get a, a, the, that profit from those episodes. So the first two episodes count as the first two episodes of the show. So that they'll, they'll be the first episodes to get a profit. So, um, so if you've been in, thinking of, 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 of uh, investing, email me, markzikri at gmail.com, markzikri at gmail.com, or you can call me at 323-363-1259. Um, once we sell the show, we're not going to be taking investment capital anymore. So. Um, if you've been thinking of it, now's the time. Uh, but but you know, but again, you know, it's television. I'm going to have a lot of meetings. I'm going to meet with Amazon and Netflix. I had a great meeting with AMC um, here, and uh, you know, I'm going to be having a ton of meetings, and they're getting better and better and better, and I'm getting more and more people really really seriously interested in doing Space Command. So it might happen now, in the next few weeks, it might be six weeks, it might be a year, who knows? You, I never, I never assume, I never guess. All I, all I can control is what Elaine, well, I was going to say what Elaine and I are doing. I can only control what I'm doing on a good day, uh, you know, on, on a good day. But, um, but, and Elaine has been such a sweetheart helping me with Space Command, helping me make this work, writing and directing and producing with me. But, um, so I never, I never make a guess as to when something's going to happen or how it's going to happen. But I do promise you this. We are going to finish Space Command. It is going to be wonderful. It already is wonderful, but it's in rough cut. And, and all of my friends who run shows, Frank Spotnitz, you know, all of these people have said, Glenn Mazzara, they've all said, do not show the rough cut to any executive. And they know, and I trust them, because a rough cut doesn't have the visual effects. It's guys standing on a green screen, guys walking around. You know, it's like, you know, if you really don't know what you're looking at, you can't, you can't watch it. So... So I'll keep you informed, but I wanted to let you all know, and particularly those three people, those three guys who said, where, where, why don't you just finish it? What are you doing? Why are you taking my money and going to France? <laughs> I'm, I'm not, honest, I'm not. So, uh, as we have discussed. Anyway, so, uh, cute dog again. Cute dog, cute dog. French pigeon, if you can see it, and somewhere it's around here on the, on the railing. Uh, there's a pigeon somewhere there. So, um, but, um, but anyway, until next time, it's Mark Zikri of Space Command, Mark Zikri, uh, Mr. Sci-Fi. Feel free to reach out to me for anything you need. You'll get your t-shirt soon, you'll get your patches soon, you'll get all sorts of swell stuff soon. And, um, and that's it for now. So from, from Cannes, France, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.